Let's play Descent to Under Mountain, created in 1997 for the PC, developed and published by Interplay. Descent to Under Mountain is a first-person, real-time combat role-playing game in the advanced Dungeons & Dragons um, engine, and uh, set in the city of Waterdeep. It is also possibly the first Advanced Dungeons & Dragons role-playing game that takes place in an entirely 3D graphics engine. The downside of this is that it is the Descent graphics engine, used quite well indeed in the game Descent, and not used as well here. A lot of heavy modification was needed to be made for the uh, Descent engine to work as a role-playing game engine, and it does show, I have to say. So we're on the character creation screen here, purely because I could not get the um, main menu to actually record. It wouldn't record for me at all. But this part would. So let's create our character. We start with uh, humans as an option, and we can click these shields, as the game says, to uh, pick different races. I know what race I want to be. Half-elves are uh, an option as well. We are not going to be them either. And then there are elves. We are also not going to be them. There are also drow. Yeah, the game gives you the option of being a drow, and considering we're heading into the under mountain, I'm not surprised. They also give you dwarves as an option, and halflings. Note there are no options for gnomes. At all. End of book. There is no option for gnomes. So we're going to go back and we're going to play a drow. Because if you want to make an original character when you're heading into the Under Mountain, you make a drow. Let us make a drow. And go to the uh, class screen. It does load a little slowly, and I'm actually using an ISO of the CD for this, so it's a little difficult to actually. Uh, get going properly. It's very difficult to record this game. So we could be a cleric, if we wanted to be. But I don't feel like we should be a cleric. We could also be a mage, if we wanted to be. Or a thief, that is. The mage is actually here. Whoops. Well, we could be a combination. We can't be a cleric mage. We could be a mage thief. But we are not going to be, because we are going to be a fighter. Just a straight-up fighter. We hit things with a sword. Statistics screen. And that was statistics screen. You're given the plus one dex and minus one con already. And we, we get to roll stats by clicking this button. And we're going to keep clicking this button until we get stats we want, which are lots of high stats. So that we can build a character with lots of strength. Like that, for instance. Would be okay if the other stats weren't very low. That's also not good. That's also not good. That's okay, though. We'll put the 16 in strength. We'll put the 16 in dex. We'll put a 13 in con. We'll put a 13 in charisma. And we will put a 12 there and 11 there. And we'll give them five bonus snap points, which we shall use to bump up our dexterity to 19. And we shall bump up our strength to 18 slash 1. Actually, is there any reason to bump our strength up to 18 slash 1? You can see the uh, UI is having a little bit of difficulty keeping up. So that improves it to that. And that improves it to... Yeah, there is a big reason why you want to do that. No real reason why you want to do that, though. 13. Well, we shall increase it to 13. There we go. Good stats for a fighter. Now... We're not allowed to play an evil character in this game, so we're going to pick the uh, most original alignment for a drow, and that is Chaotic Good. And we're going to pick our portrait. We scroll backwards to get to the uh, drow portraits, and I think this one is perfect. Now, as for the name for our character, bearing in mind we are trying to be an original character here, I think, uh, Druzd. Druzd the Drow. I think it's perfect. No one can doubt that Druzd is an entirely original creation. Without further ado, we can exit to the main menu, or we can actually enter the city of Waterdeep and begin the game, which we shall with this little loading screen here. Now, 
The only place we can actually go at this point is we can go to uh, Blackstaff's Tower. The uh, Kelman Blackstaff. Uh, or we could go to the main menu. We're not going to go to the main menu. And is it me or... Does Waterdeep not seem as spectacular as I thought it would be? Especially considering there is a massive piece of wall missing. I know there's a bit of a drop there, but there's wall there. Why not wall here? Let's go meet Blackstaff, shall we? Surely he has something to tell me. Hello! Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for answering my summons. No problem. I am Kelvin, called Blackstaff. I serve as a... counselor to the Waterdeep City government. Okay. I hold a great interest in the city's well-being, and it is for this reason I have called for you. Indeed. The Lords of Waterdeep have asked me to find some capable adventurers to investigate a small problem. Oh? Kobolds are appearing in the streets of Waterdeep, raiding storehouses, then retreating to a hidden lair. Hmm. The kobolds no doubt come from the dungeon of Undermountain, probably from a location close to the surface of Waterdeep. The little pests. Something must be driving them out of their natural caverns deep within under mountain. Okay. If unchecked, the kobolds may grow bolder and expand their activities beyond simple theft. The City Watch has stepped up their patrols, but locating the kobolds base within under mountain is proving difficult. Can imagine. That is why I have summoned you. Okay. We need you to find their lair and stop their raids into Waterdeep. See what I can do? Most of the kobold activity has been reported near the Yawning Portal, an inn located in the Castle Ward. This is not surprising. Within the Yawning Portal is a well that provides the easiest entrance into Undermountain. This is where you must start your mission. Okay. Here are two gold coins to pay your way from the portal into Undermountain. The price of entering or leaving the dungeon is one gold piece. Okay. Be warned, if you do not have a gold piece to pay for your exit from Undermountain, you will be trapped there. The Lords of Waterdeep thank you for your assistance in this matter. Return here for your reward when you have stopped the raiders. Well... So they asked a level one character to go and deal with this. Here is the uh, the marketplace. They have many of many things, but right now I want to look for uh, some very specific items. I want to buy a cloak, I want to buy a belt, and I want to buy some boots. I want to buy pretty much nothing else. I could buy a shield. I will in fact buy a shield. Why not? I won't buy chainmail, there's no point. They have many of a few items. They, they don't have any magic stuff. You did notice they had a... Uh, Potions of healing. We're not going to be buying those either. And also to note, you can actually seriously wind Blackstaff up by constantly visiting him. Let's do so. Hello again! It's good to see you again. The Lords of Waterdeep are very happy with your work so far. Continue to report your progress to me, and I will tell you when we have a new mission you might find interesting. I, I literally went to the marketplace, Kelvin. Are you... Are you Sure you're paying any attention at all to what I'm doing? Fair enough. We shall now head back and talk to Kelvin again. Hello again! I'm back! I'm afraid that I have no advice for you at the moment. I will continue to help you as best I can. It's, it's great that he'll let this level one character constantly just walk up to him and just ask him for advice, but fair enough. Hello, Kelvin. I've, um... I basically walked out of the door, hung around for a minute, and then knocked on the door again. How are you, sir? There is meant to be music here. It doesn't play. I wish I could offer you more encouragement. Dungeon exploration can be as long and as hard as anything in life. I can only encourage you to keep pushing yourself. Fair enough, but I haven't actually stepped into the dungeon yet, Kelvin. I'm just currently pestering you, because I'm about to pester you some more. How are you, sir? Are you okay? I do not mean to be insulting, but it seems like you have made little progress of late. Push ahead, show some initiative, bring me back some interesting information or artifacts, and then I can surely find something else for you to do. No, I think I'm just going to walk out the door and then step back in, if that's all right, Kelvin. You don't mind, do you? You're not busy, are you? You don't seem busy. Hello. Why do you keep coming to me? I'm sure a brave adventurer such as yourself can find something in Undermountain to keep you busy. 
I will help you as best I can. But there are some problems that only you can solve. Actually, that's not true, Kelvin. You could actually come to the Yawning Portal, go into Undermountain, and solve the problem yourself. I know it's not much experience for you, because you are level a lot compared to me, but... Hey, by the way, uh, how are you doing, Kelvin? You alright? I don't mean to be rude. But you've been bothering me a great deal of late, yep. with very little to show for it. Come back when you have made some progress, and I will be glad to help you. Goodbye. Oh, he's starting to get, um, annoyed at me. Clearly we're onto something here. Go on, Druzd. Knock on his door again. See if he'll see you. Hello, Kelvin. There is no need to come to me every time you stub your toe. Oh. I'm sure if you look harder in Undermountain, you'll find something I'll be interested in. That may be the case. But we haven't pushed you far enough into annoyance yet, Kelvin. Let's keep talking to you. Hello. I am a busy man. Come back when you have something new to tell me. But, but, I saw a bird. It was outside. There aren't birds in Undermountain, or in the Underdark, at that matter. Well, actually, there probably are birds in the Underdark, but you really don't want to meet them. Hey, Kelvin, I saw another bird. Hello. Stop bothering me. What did I ever do to deserve the likes of you? You're worse than that fool Volo. Can't you take a hint? Will I have to smite you to be rid of you? Now either make some progress, or do not bother me. Ooh, he is angry. I wonder if we do visit him again, if he will, in fact, just kill us. Hello. It's good to see you again. No, he's fine. The Lords of Waterdeep are very happy with your work so far. Continue to report your progress to me, and I will tell you when we have a new mission you might find interesting. Maybe, maybe Kelvin's just snapped. I've, I've spoken to him so much that he is just broken. And he's just like, fine, I will just accept that you're here. Just go away. We'll go to the Yawning Portal now. The reason why I've been holding off going to the Yawning Portal is because... Here is the fantastic graphics engine. Yes. This is the fantastic graphics engine. This is what they use the Descent graphics engine for. And believe me... This is the highest graphics that you're going to get from this. It's blurry, it's messy, and it doesn't look good. Pressing I for the inventory, you can't equip the sword. The sword goes in a sort of strange slot where you have to press the 1 button to uh, gain access to using it. We have a shield. We will equip that to lower armor class to 3. We also have a gem of curing and a scroll. We do not know what the scroll does. Our stats are here, we have no spells, we're a chaotic good uh, drow fighter, level 1, no ability to do anything. And uh, without further ado, you can see also that you can actually keep controlling the game while you're in the inventory screen. This is important, because the inventory screen does not pause gameplay, and as you can see it's even more blurry here. Also, you may notice that... Um, there are people here. You can sort of, you can see one there, you can kind of see one in the distance. You press A to interact with them, but you use the arrow keys, not WASD, the arrow keys to move. Space jumps, by the way. <coughs> they picked a very good jump sound for drows. And uh, if you switch to press the zero key, it goes to your punching with your fists, and one to our broadsword. Without further ado, let's explore! As you enter the Yawning Portal, you quickly scan the many patrons. Your trained eye notes those of bearing and dismisses the common folk. The common folk have disappeared because I have seen that they were not worth talking to. We're indeed in the Yawning Portal, from Hordes of the Underdark, and... This is the music for taverns in Baldur's Gate 1. Here, in fact, is a person. We shall talk to them by pressing A. The screen goes into a weird sort of grey palette. And then we get text. Hello, adventurer. Is this an earnest young adventurer? Heading down into the dungeon, seeking their fortune? If you find something of interest down there, let me know. By the way, I'm Mert the Merchant. I'll be keeping an eye on you. 
Is it true that you're one of the Lords of Waterdeep? Yes, but don't tell anyone. The Lords don't look too kindly at anyone bold enough to make such a claim. What can you tell me about Durnham? Yes, Durnham, the guy that is running the, uh, the Yawning Portal. What can you tell me about him? You can press 1, by the way, to just, uh... Well, actually, you can't. You have to click it. That lout? Pay no attention to him. Especially when it comes to Undermountain. Just because he survived numerous excursions into that hole and knows more about it than anyone I've known. Just ignore him. W wait. Tell me about his adventures. Most real adventurers don't talk about themselves. Bards and Volo accepted. Suffice to say that Durnham has seen more terrors, slain more terrors, felt more spells, and... Well, you get the message. I'd listen to him carefully if I were you. But you just told me to pay him no attention! And I also didn't get to ask you another question, but that's fine. By the way, we could just smash this furniture. There is actually no in-game consequence for doing so. Use the A button to open doors, like this one. You get no response to your knock to the door. However, nobody stops you from entering the room to have a look around and grab this levitating potion the size of half of your body. It's a potion of healing. Excellent. If we go down here, we can see a, uh, I believe that's a halfling. But here is something more interesting. You knock on the door and await a response. A voice in your head says, Come in, adventurer. I am at your service. <laughs> that is, in fact, a mind flayer. Just sat here in the in the yawning portal. Just sat here. Or rather, stood here, arms folded. You could try and kill him. You could try and kill any of the people here. But there is absolutely no point, because they're far too strong, and they'll kill you. So, let's talk to him. A voice within your mind echoes silently as this creature's tentacled visage waves. It is a, the most disconcerting feeling. I am glad that you did not draw your sword at the sight of me. My kind does not have a favorable reputation, and that is just given their deeds. <laughs> What's a mind flayer doing here? Not all illithids desire conquest. I feed my hunger with commerce and discovery. One profits better and learns more when one is trustworthy. So that is a virtue for which I strive. I hope that you strive for this as well. May you stay clear of the path of madness. See? We're both chaotic good. We're both rebelling against our races and archetypes. Except I'm slightly more original than you. Do you have any advice for someone going down into the dungeon? I usually charge for advice, but so important is this warning that I will give it gladly. If you enter the Undermountain with killing thoughts against all creatures who dwell within, you will die, and you will be deserving of death. Keep your distance and observe the thoughts of your prey. If the prey charges you, then you will likely have killing thoughts against you. And if you should prepare, then you should prepare to defend yourself. But if they stand still and contemplate you, that you may attempt to reason with them. Be not a slayer, but a thoughtful man. And, through, and though reason risks deception, the reward is oft times greater when you stay your blade and use your tongue. <laughs> when you tell me about the kobolds, you have forgotten my price. You didn't say your price. Touché. But I shall give this to you anyway. Some catastrophe has struck the kobolds that has driven them to desperate measures. They are never loyal or disciplined soldiers, and some kobolds may prove reasonable if you show that you are capable of mercy. It is your judgment. Walk in enlightenment. What is your price? I charge 500 gold per answer. It may seem like much now, but Undermountain is our most lucrative environment. I believe you will find it reasonable. You press escape to end conversations. And with that, we have ended the first video of Descent to Undermountain, and we will close the door behind the Mind Flayer and pretend that we never encountered it. Ever. When we come back, folks, maybe we might actually go into the Yawning Portal and, in fact, find some kobolds to kill. Because Kelvin Blackstaff apparently trusts anyone to solve the problems of the city of Waterdeep. I'll catch you next time, and I'll see you then. Later.